Thank you everyone for joining. Apologies, um, we had some issues um, getting into the Zoom, um, but now we are here. So we're just gonna give everyone another minute or two to be able to get settled and join. Uh, and then we'll, we'll get started and go right away. Seems like most people are in. Okay. All right. So why don't we get started just because we are um, running a little behind. Um, so um, good morning and welcome. And thank you for joining the online information session about Columbia University's Data Science Institute, uh, Data Science Academic Program. My name is Brian Cortese, and I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions and Academic Affairs for the MS in Data Science. Um, joining me today is my colleague, Taylor Reyes, um, the Student Affairs Officer for the Data Science Institute. Um, so as we begin the presentation, I'd like to ask that you hold off submitting any questions uh, until the end, um, as I hope that more than a good number of your questions will actually be answered through the formal presentation today. And later in the session, we will be joined by several current masters and data science students to help answer any additional questions and learn a little bit more about what life is like at uh, Columbia. Um, so it should be noted that um, we are actually recording today's session. So if you're not able to stay, especially because we started a little bit late, um, you know, there will be a link available. Um, we typically share uh, the link in a follow up email just uh, a few days after um, the session. So uh, the, the session will probably run a little bit more than an hour um, because we have the panel. Um, and it really just depends on how many questions everyone has. So let's get started. Um, so the, the agenda for today's session will include highlights and statistics of Columbia's engineering and the Data Science Institute. Um, we're going to talk about the various degrees that are offered and program highlights. We'll go over um, the admissions requirements, uh, financial aid information, and then finally information about graduate student life here uh, at Columbia. So Columbia University was founded in 1754 as King's College by the Royal Charter of King George II of England. Um, it is the oldest institution of higher learning in the state of New York and the fifth oldest in the United States. The university has three undergraduate schools, 13 graduate and professional schools, a medical center, four affiliated colleges and seminaries, 25 libraries, centers for the arts, more than 100 research centers and institutes. Um, so as of 2020, um, the, the most recent statistics available, um, there were over 31,000 students enrolled at Columbia. Um, this includes undergraduate and professional schools. Um, and the graduate student population um, does outnumber undergraduates. And the School of Engineering actually has over 4,000 students. Um, and I do know that generally it's definitely gone, gone up from there um, since 2020. So the data science and um, academic programs reside in the Columbia School of Engineering, which was founded as the School of Mines in 1864, and then renamed in 1997 in recognition of ZYSU as the SU Foundation School of Engineering and Applied Science. Data science students will take statistics courses offered by the Department of Statistics, which resides in the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. Um, Arts and Sciences is informally known as the Jewel in Columbia's Crown, and originally formed from three disciplines of study, um, political science, uh, philosophy, and pure science in the late 1800s. So we'd like to take a moment to point out some notable Columbia alumni. Uh, the Columbia, Columbia Alumni Association links over 355,000 alumni around the world. Um, well, over 40,000 individuals make up the um, Columbia Engineering Alumni Network. Oftentimes, alumni attend events and ceremonies on campus, giving our students the opportunity to engage and network with them. Columbia has 84 Nobel laureates. So the data science academic programs are jointly offered in collaboration by the Fu Foundation School of Engineering and Applied Science, the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences, and the Data Science Institute. 
Um, in 2012, Columbia launched the Data Science Institute in response to a call made by New York City's Applied Sciences Initiative. And the goal of this program was to expand New York City's capacity in the applied sciences, maintain global competitiveness, and create jobs. Columbia's answer was for the creation of a rich interdisciplinary institute to train the next generation of data scientists and develop innovative technology to serve society. There are about 40 founding members of the institute and over 370 affiliated uh, faculty members from 17 schools, institutes, and colleges across the university. So the institute strives to be the single world leading institution in research and education in the theory and practice of data science. As data science students, you'll have an opportunity to take advantage of the vast programming offered by DSI or Data Science Institute. I highly encourage you to take time to explore the Institute's new website um, for news articles, upcoming events, research programs, uh, student profiles, and it really shows the breadth and, and reach of data science across campus. The Interdisciplinary Data Science Program resides in the School of Engineering and Applied Science, um, and this is also known as HEAS. Uh, as data science students, you're, en you're engineering students, and your degree will be conferred by the School of Engineering. Uh, HEAS has nine academic departments, and each of these departments offers a wide range of academic programs um, at the graduate level, consisting of Master of Science, up to PhD, and Engineering Science Doctorate. As a student in the MS and Data Science program, you may have an opportunity to take elective courses offered within these departments. Um, this does depend on your advisor's approval. Um, in addition to graduate programs, engineering also offers a number of non-degree programs, and, um, one being our certification of professional achievement in data science. Um, there are also a number of dual degree programs that are offered in collaboration with other professional schools. Um, for example, there is a dual MS, which is offered by the computer science and, and the journalism school. And then there is an opportunity for students to enroll in an MS MBA program that's jointly offered through the engineering, uh, industrial engineering and um, operations research department, um, as well as the business school. So at this time, data science is not offering dual degree programs. Um, but we'll get into how our students do have an opportunity to at least cross the register for classes, not only within CES, um, but outside of CES across campus as well. Um, one last thing I want to mention is that the School of Engineering also offers a number of online learning programs through the Columbia Video Network, or CVN, um, and this does include the Data Science Certification Program. So with that brief introduction to the university's history, we'll now delve deeper into the Institute and why we're here. So why data science? Uh, much of the initial proposal of the former mayor of Bloomberg drew upon a McKinsey report that suggested lar analyzing large data sets, or so-called big data, will become a key basis of competition, underpinning new waves of productivity, growth, and innovation. Companies and policymakers alike are facing significant hurdles as they seek to fully capture big data's potential. McKinsey predicts there will be a shortage of managers and analysts with the skills to understand and make decisions based on the analysis of big data. So the purpose of our program is to provide a standalone qualification for students to fill those gaps, specifically for individuals with quantitative background who wish to gain training in the field of data science. We do envision that most of our students will be seeking continuing education either to strengthen their existing careers or the means of embarking on a new career trajectory taking advantage of the growing demand for a workforce with data science expertise. So the data science program. Um, in fall of 2013, uh, the Institute launched the inaugural class for the certification program. The following year, the first cohort of the MS in data science enrolled at Columbia. Uh, and then we continue to develop additional academic programs to address the needs of those interested in data science. In 2016, we launched an online data science series through edX. Um, this series is taught by a distinguished team of professors at Columbia's Data Science Institute. And the series is perfect for anyone who wants to understand the basic concept in data science without getting into the weeds of programming. 
It should be noted that you can audit this class for free, or you can choose to enroll for official certification um, that does come with a fee. Please note that the courses are not credit bearing and the certification, uh, if you choose to do that, is issued through edX and not Columbia. Um, the certification program at Columbia um, is, is the um, Certification of Professional Achievement in Data Science. Uh, this uh, program is uh, four courses at three credits each and is a non-degree part-time program. Uh, we do offer it both on campus as well as online through the Columbia Video Network. Uh, the curriculum is a mixture of computer science and statistics. Um, so unfortunately for those listening internationally, the on-campus program is not eligible for a J-1 or an F-1 student visa. Um, however, those that may be in the immediate area on an H-1 sponsored work visa, you are welcome to apply to the part-time program. Um, on the CS side, we require students to complete algorithms for data science and machine learning. And on the statistics side, you would take probability and statistics for data science, as well as exploratory data analysis and visualization. And so with the majority of our certification students um, working full time, we try to provide flexibility for our students to complete their coursework in the evening. Um, but this is dependent on faculty availability. Uh, students are not required to take more than one course per, per semester. And most certification students will um, take three semesters to complete the requirements. Um, more of our students are opting to take one course per semester so that they have a chance to can ease back into school. Uh, the courses are challenging, and especially for those um, that are working full time and they have been out of school for some time, it, it's helpful to start slowly. Um, so uh, the Master's of Data Science program, which I think many of you on here are very interested in. Um, so the MS in Data Science program is a 30 credit program with 21 credits of core requirements and nine credits of elective. Uh, and it, again, it's a mixture of computer science and statistics courses. So on the computer science side, students will complete algorithms for data science and um, computer algorithms for data science, computer systems for data science, machine learning for data science. And on the statistics side, um, you'll see the familiar classes of probability and statistics, um, exploratory data analysis and visualization, and then you have um, statistical inference and modeling. Um, the, the final requirement is the data science capstone ethics course. Uh, and the capstone is a culminating class where students leverage um, all of their prior coursework for the purpose of completing a group project that's either faculty research and or industry data driven. Uh, so this essentially gives our students practice using their data science skills in a project oriented class, while also gaining exposure to the ethics of managing large data sets. Uh, typically, there's about four to five students on a team. Um, you'll meet with your team and your mentors throughout the semester. Um, you'll have different deliverables, uh, such as like a midterm um, progress report, uh, and then there is a poster presentation at the end of the course where you'll present your project to the instructors, your peers, and all of the mentors. Uh, on the data science uh, website, there's um, usually an, a news article after every uh, capstone presentation through each semester, um, and I have an old one here that I can actually send through the chat feature to everyone. So later on today, you can take a look at the 2020 projects, and I'm sure uh, there is a link to, you know, the SNU's article archive um, to some, more, some of the more recent um, projects. Um, so a little bit more about the program and sequencing. We do offer part-time options for the master's uh, program, um, but the vast majority of our students will enroll full-time. International students on an F1 student visa will be required to enroll full time. Um, the students will typically take uh, 12 credits in the fall, 12 credits in the spring, and then most will intern in the summer. Others will take advantage of research opportunities on campus that are offered in the summer. Um, and then you'd complete up the program in the following fall with six credits. So for the fall of 2023, we do anticipate a class size of about 175 students 
Um, but this is largely contingent on the quality of applicants and the volume of applications that we do receive. Um, so a little bit more about electives. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you'll complete nine credits of electives. Um, data science does offer a number of electives each semester for our students, but you're not limited to taking those courses. Um, the MS program emphasizes interdisciplinary collaboration, so students are welcome to look across campus for electives. Um, you do need to have approval from the data science academic team, uh, and they would need to follow their criteria listed here. Um, so it needs to be graduate level class, it should be technical in nature, uh, and completed for a letter grade. So a few examples of um, data science electives include applied machine learning, applied deep learning, causal inference for data science, um, finance and structuring. Um, for data science is a, a new class that we started in the past year. Um, in addition to advanced coursework in computer science and statistics, students may take classes offered by other engineering departments, um, including the industrial engineering operations research department, electrical engineering, applied physics, applied math. Um, students have taken classes across campus, including um, the business school, journalism, architecture, biomedical informatics, social work. Um, so there is a wide variety of classes and, and again, each semester differs um, when it comes to what classes are offered by other departments. Um, but it gives this should give you a good idea that there is um, an opportunity for you to take classes that are interesting and related to data um, across campus. Um, so next we have research and I'll see if my colleague is available. Great. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Um, and just as a reminder, because I saw a few messages, um, this is being recorded and we will be sharing this recording with you later in case you want to review or you missed anything in the beginning. Um, so research at Columbia. So you may be interested in taking advantage of the many research opportunities available while at Columbia. Research projects may be funded while others can be completed for credit or on a voluntary basis. And research credit can be used towards the MS and data science programs elective requirements. So there are a variety of ways that students can find a research project. While you always have the option to reach out to faculty members uh, directly for potential opportunities, there are a number of resources we encourage you to consider as well. The School of Engineering maintains a list of projects available each semester from engineering faculty, Data science students are encouraged to check that frequently throughout the academic year for updates. The Data Science Institute also offers the Campus Connections Program and the DSI Scholars Program, which reaches out to the Institute's 350 affiliated faculty members across campus for projects requiring data science skills. And the Data Science Student Services team sends an email to our students with a variety of opportunities throughout the year, including projects from these programs. Uh, it should be noted that students in other programs, such as computer science, statistics, and other qualifying majors, are eligible to apply to these projects too. In addition, the Data Science Institute also has eight research centers, which serves as a means to foster interdisciplinary collaboration among faculty across departments. There may be research opportunities that come from the center projects each semester. Additionally, these centers will host variety various events throughout the academic year, such as poster sessions, workshops, seminar series, and students interested in data science are definitely encouraged to participate and attend these events. So career and employers, um, one of the things we know our students are very excited about when they join our program. So engineering offers strong career support and resources. We have a dedicated career officer on staff who manages a number of events throughout the academic year. Data science students will be able to participate in career and internship fairs, employer information sessions, technical interview workshops, uh, data science industry spotlight events, and internship panels. Um, currently, we have over 700 or so employers for data science alone recruiting our students, and our placement rate is about 90% within three months of graduating from the program. 
Additionally, every master's student will take part in the School of Engineering Professional Development and Learning Series. And this is a zero credit course that aims to enhance and expand Columbia Engineering's graduate students' interpersonal, professional, and leadership skills. Uh, workshops in this program include communication, business etiquette, networking, time management, and ethics courses. And there is a two week boot camp in late August prior to the start of the semester when new students will complete the majority of these courses. So many applicants are interested in learning where our students are placed upon graduation naturally. And you'll see a partial list of employers from our December 2021 and May 2022 graduates here on the screen. So our graduates are taking on roles as data scientists, data analysts, business intelligence analysts, software engineers with machine learning focus in virtually every industry, as you'll see here. We have over 800 uh, data science alumni, and these alumni are actively giving back to the data science community, and they're participating in a variety of events, including mock technical interviews, alumni panels, and many of them also attend our career fairs. So they are constantly providing our students with support. Uh, we are keeping up the workshops and networking events between um, our students mixed of virtually and in person. Um, we're very excited. We're hosting our in-person career fair actually this Friday and mock technical interviews virtually later this month. So hopefully when you guys join, everything will be back in person next fall. So graduate student life. Many of our graduate students take full advantage of New York City and the many leadership opportunities within Columbia University with over 500 student groups and organizations, including the Columbia Data Science Society, Engineering Graduate Student Council, and our very own Data Science Student Council. We encourage you to get involved and sign up for the student club listservs. The Columbia Data Science Society hosts a yearly hackathon each fall that you're encouraged to participate in. They also host a variety of workshops, seminars, and even bring employers to campus. And our Data Science Student Council is dedicated to advocate on behalf of the MS and Data Science students. They also host social events throughout the academic year. All right, thank you, Taylor. Um, okay, um, so let's talk about applying. Um, now you have all of the information about, you know, Columbia and what it would like to be a student here. Um, so let's talk about the actual application process. Um, in order to be considered eligible for the program, our applicants must fulfill the following prerequisites. You must hold, hold an undergraduate degree. Um, you must have prior quantitative coursework, and you must uh, have completed prior programming coursework, specifically in either Java, C, C++, or Python. And we welcome applicants to fulfill the prerequisites, prerequisites through a number of mechanisms, um, formal college coursework, online classes, such as uh, mass online courses, um, through internships or employment experience. Uh, that being said, our students should have strong quantitative and programming skills, and our applicants do set the bar in terms of competitiveness. So individuals that have more documented experience and exposure to programming um, and quantitative skills will go further in the admissions review process. Um, we do require that, students, uh, that applicants come to, uh, into the MS knowing a specific programming language. Um, wait, sorry. We do not require students uh, that come into this program have uh, a specific programming language knowledge, but it, you should be um, either exposed to either Java, C, C++, or Python. Um, most of our professors are using Python, but if you only have experience in Java or C++, that's fine. Um, you will use R in one of the core classes as well. Um, but we have this prerequisite because programming won't be taught during our classes. Um, so we do encourage applicants to consider taking additional preparation beyond the minimum eligibility requirement listed here. So if you have an intro to programming course in Java, that's great. Um, 
but uh, we do typically encourage you to consider taking uh, a data structures class or you know any additional um, coursework that requires these, one of these programming languages. Um, on the quantitative side, most of our accepted students have taken the full calculus sequence, so Calc 1, 2, 3, multivariable calculus, um, as well as linear algebra. And um, we do strongly encourage anyone that has not taken linear algebra to do so, um, as this will significantly strengthen your application. Um, so I'll repeat that because these are um, some pretty important pieces um, to applying. Um, so when it comes to computer programming, you need to have strong programming skills. Um, so the more programming experience you have, the stronger your, your application will be. You don't need to know all of these programming languages listed here, um, but um, you need to know one of them. Um, so you need to have strong experience in either Java, C, C++, or Python. Um, taking intro to programming as well as a data structures class um, or some other uh, computer science course uh, will definitely strengthen your application. On the quantitative uh, side, we encourage you to do um, calculus, um, but strongly encourage you to have to complete linear algebra if you have not done so. Okay. Um, now applying itself. Um, the application requires um, students to complete everything listed here. Um, so you'll have uh, the transcript, three letters of recommendation, the GRE if for fall of 2023 is optional, um, personal statement, resume, um, and application fee. Uh, so the master's in data science program, the, the first priority deadline is January 15th. Um, with the final deadline of February 15th. While you're encouraged to submit for the first priority deadline, you do have until that February 15th deadline to submit all your required materials, um, and we, we will confirm that you would be reviewed. Um, I do want to note that um, no one factor on your application is going to immediately deny a student. Um, our faculty review applications from a holistic perspective. So individuals may offset lower test scores with strong letters of recommendation, demonstrated academic success during the prior graduate or undergraduate programs, and of course, um, strong personal statements as well as prior work experience. And let me just see what time it is real quick. Okay. Uh, we have a couple more slides before we actually start the panel. Uh, and I see some of our panelists joined uh, already. Thank you guys. Um, so uh, quickly to talk about the tuition and financial aid. So the rate of tuition for the current academic year is, uh, did I not have to, no, I did, um, so it's $2,362 per credit. Um, and so the certification program at 12 credits is $28,344 for just tuition. Um, and for the 30 credit MS program, it's $70,860. So these costs, um, total costs listed here are approximate because the school's tuition generally rises between three and 4% on an annual basis. Um, and it should be noted that the longer you stretch out your program, the more expensive it will be over time. Um, and it's important to also note that there are additional fees um, so we've included a link to the estimated cost of attendance. Let's see if I can quickly go to that page and send this to everyone in the chat. Uh, a reminder, can everyone, if you have a, a question, please use the question portal um, so that we can see it and, and share that information with everyone. Okay, um, so in the chat, I actually, um, I posted the link to this page that you all might find helpful. Oh, one quick stop before you do this. Um, so, yeah, 
So basically, um, we wanted to make sure that you had access to some of these um, great resources and, and um, links on campus. So the, the financial aid and financial services sites are great resources to explore. Um, you'll be able to find information on tuition, the breakdown of fees, potential funding opportunities. Um, for anyone interested in certification, um, because it's non-degree and part-time, their opportunities for federal aid and external scholarship are limited. Um, there aren't many out there. Um, they're typically aimed at full-time degree programs only. Um, at this time, there are no inst institutional aid opportunities for the MS program. Um, however, U.S. citizens and permanent residents are eligible for aid um, by applying to FAFSA. Um, so please keep in mind financial aid opportunities for these programs are limited, and I do highly encourage you to visit the links noted here, um, which have some additional tips into looking for financial aid. Um, we do have opportunity for on-campus positions through our Campus Connection program. Um, this program is actually able to connect our students with Columbia faculty and staff that need students with data science skills. Um, so some of the positions are paid, while others may be um, used for credit, for research credit. Um, the, on, uh, the paid on-campus positions won't cover the cost of tuition, but it can offset the cost. Um, there are also other, you know, teaching assistant, grad assistant, research assistant roles, um, and they are competitive um, and they don't cover the cost of tuition, but it can help with the cost of living in New York City. Um, fully funded positions are typically um, reserved for PhD students working with faculty. And that's where we're at. So I know there are questions coming in and Taylor and I are, you know, that are just directed at Taylor and myself and we're working on getting those, but. Um, we actually have um, our panelists, all of them are here. Yes. Um, so I'd love to welcome our panelists. Um, if everyone's, you know, very busy, and so I'd like to start with that first, then we'll get to other questions that you've already listed in the Q&A later. Um, thank you for everyone. Here, let me, um, oops, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a minute so you can see everyone's face. How do I stop it? Stop sharing my screen. There we go. Um, all right. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Um, and yeah, so I, I think we could just jump right in. Um, maybe we can start. Um, I'll go to this. Way. So, Shri, um, why don't you start and just and everyone will introduce themselves, say your name, um, and maybe you can say um, where you entered your undergraduate um and maybe your major i think that's helpful uh, all right sure hi everyone uh, my name is shruti i uh, have a graduate degree in mathematics so this data science degree is my second master's degree and uh, i'm happy to answer any questions you might have anyone can go next we're going to make, make sure that this is a informal. So anytime that there's questions too that come up, anyone who feels free to answer them can do that. So. Hi, uh, my name is Yannick. Um, I did my undergrad in Munich in management and computer science. Um, and yeah, very happy to be here. Very happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Kaylin Tass, a major. I went to Howard University in Washington, DC, and I studied biology and psychology in undergrad. So, hello everyone, my name is Yun Han. You can also call me Michael. Uh, I went to undergrad in UC Berkeley, studying data science and economics. And now I'm studying da uh, data science here at Columbia. Awesome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much again, I know you're all very busy uh, in the middle of the semester, so we appreciate that. Um, it wasn't that long ago that you all were um, doing what the attendees today are doing, which is thinking about applying to the program. Um, and I'm sure it feels like quite a while ago, though. Um, but I know this is a, an important time for our applicants, um, and they're trying to make a really big decision. Um, and so it's always helpful to hear from current students that are here. Um, so I guess one of the first questions um, is uh, that a lot of our applicants have um, that I, I think that would be helpful is um, what kind of data science experience did you have before coming to Columbia? 
um, people want to know, you know, are they doing enough? Is this the right program for me? So um, maybe someone can share a little bit about their prior data science experience. I can go first. Uh, so I actually did not have that much of a data science experience. I did have experience with mathematical modeling using different techniques to extract insight, not necessarily machine learning. I guess one of the things that helped me uh, just learn things while being in the program was having uh, a math degree, understanding the numbers, that really helped me. But I would say that you don't necessarily need to have data science projects as long as you understand what it entails, you have a curious mind and you want to know more about data. I think that should suffice as long as you're able to present yourself like that. Fantastic. Anyone um, else wanna share? Yeah, I have, um, I mean, I studied computer science, so I'd say like the, um, that pretty much covered most of the coding and computational foundations of data science. And then I did one project, like one or two projects by myself for the study program, but no formal or like um, practical experience in that I, I worked in the industry or um, studied or took classes in that. It was more uh, self-taught before that. Fantastic. Personally, I did not have, um, just like Shruti mentioned, I didn't have um, data science experience per se or background in computer science, but I was in uh, like neuropsychology research labs in neuroscience labs. And so in some of those cases where we were using machine learning techniques, so I would say if you have like a research experience, or research experiences now in your undergrad um, and you're doing a lot of data analysis, that should suffice. Um, and as long as you're curious and willing to learn. Awesome. Yes, uh, totally, I agree. So uh, even though I come from a data science, like undergrad background, um, I feel like data science is a field that is very interdisciplinary. Um, it relies on some core fundamental subjects such as like math, computer science, statistics, um, and I think these, even, even if like you don't have like data science background, those fundamental subjects will have a very solid foundation for you um, to learn about areas in data science. And also as um, Ke Kelland uh, said, if you have like research experience, because now a lot of research are using machine learning and um, computer science to do data analysis or computation, um, then that skill set could transfer into um, your work or research here at Columbia. And also, I feel like this pro program by itself is very self-sufficient as we have a core structure for the curriculum. And I think most of the topics that a data scientist need is covered um, by the core. And then you can choose electives based on your what you like. Fantastic. And I'm talking about uh, electives and things like that, I think um, one, another question for people that are, you know, just being exposed to kind of the curriculum that we have here at Columbia, which is a little bit different than some of the other data science programs that are offered across um, the country and, and that are out there. Um, what, I guess, has been the most uh, enjoyable class and maybe one of the more challenging classes or, you know, it doesn't have to be a core class because I think the electives too are oftentimes the ones that I hear from students are really they're really excited about. Um, so if anyone wants to share some of the, the interesting classes that they've had. Um, I'm currently taking um, an elective right now called machine learning and climate. Um, and when I was an undergrad, I was always interested in, you know, just exploring ways that machine learning is being applied in the climate space. So that was like a, a pretty cool opportunity that was like presented this semester. So that's currently like my most, I feel like my most excited, um, exciting class because I'm able to uh, apply machine learning in a very specific space that I'm currently interested in. That's right. I remember you asking about this. So what school is actually that offered? Because not through the School of Engineering, is it? Or it is? It, it is. It's in um, computer science. Oh, it's a computer science uh, elective. Great. That's great. I can go next. Oh, 
Janet, did you want to go no, next? Please, please go ahead. <laughs> um, I so I wanted to talk about uh, some of the core courses and some of the electives that I've taken. I have a background in just mathematical modeling in the healthcare industry. So I've always wanted to take uh, electives offered by the biostatistics department. Um, and I took, I think, graphical models for complex healthcare data, which was all about modeling healthcare data in terms of a huge network, which is very interesting. I would, I want to highlight here that the really amazing thing about this uh, data science institute is that they let you take electives across different uh, colleges within Columbia, as long as they feel that this has a uh, I would say a technical background and you will be able to use it in your career. So with these electives, you can actually narrow down on a field that you want to go into right after you graduate. So you're getting exposure to all the data science tools, but then you can uh, apply, apply these tools in that specific field that you're interested in through these electives, which is why I really chose Columbia over any other university. The, I think one of the core courses that I absolutely loved, which was really hard to get through, was the course of statistical inference. I feel like without that, I would have not been able to sell my data science skills to people during my internship. Really. It's really, really important to understand what's happening behind a machine learning model to be able to say that we should use this. So the curriculum that's the, st the structure of the curriculum is very, very thought out. It's not just that they put certain things together and said, oh, this is what we're going to teach you guys. There's a really, really long process that's gone behind it, I think. I think you're one of the first people ever in the past several years that, said that, that mentioned how like themselves, that that's a great class and how important it was. I think a lot of people, after they go through an internship, reflect on okay there was a reason why we had that class but like people are still like Ugh. so it is one of you know we've talked about how this program is pretty challenging and I think that's one of the ones that people always refer to the most of like pretty challenging yeah, it was also a lot of fun I remember crying good, during class, good. I was like this is this is amazing this is actually amazing it good. takes effort but then you have to be ready to do that it's a master's uh I mean degree it's not undergrad so yeah gotta be prepared for that Good, I'm glad. Anyone else take any interesting yeah, classes? So in, my, yeah. in my case, um, I took uh, basically all my electives to focus on deep learning. Um, so really narrow down on more of a technical subfield. And um, basically in the first first semester, I took a, like a all around holistic deep learning class, then focused on a research seminar in the second semester, and now, um, similar to Shruti, I'm thinking that there's like the aspect of statistical inference and like the statistical foundations are what can set you apart coming from an academic background because there's so many people entering the data science field that you will stand apart by actually understanding the difficult stuff, not the easy uh, components of it. And so I'm taking um, like a cl class on fairness and robustness and also involving causal inference of algorithms in general, but also again, deep learning involved. Fantastic. Nice. Um, so I think I, I agree with uh, Sh Sh Shruti. Um, I think uh, statistical inference class is uh, pretty hardcore and the sometimes the homework and the, it's really hard. Um, but I do think it's um, designed in a structured way that you it basically covers a lot of the um, statistical concept that you will use in your like work afterwards, even though it's challenging to learn um, when you first get started. And I think for electives, um, pretty similar to Yannick, I took some of the deep learning classes like neural networks. And also um, I enjoy the natural language processing with a professor Kathy. I'm not sure if she's uh, still teaching it next semester, but that class in itself, I think it's a pretty um, useful class if you are interested in learning about the field. And more broader topics, I would recommend um, artificial intelligence with uh, professor like Tony Deere. I think his lecture style is very clear and concise. Uh, he's probably one of the best lecturers I've ever had. Um, so I would definitely recommend his class. And in terms of data science, spe uh, specific 
data science electives. So in data science program, we have electives that are reserved for us. Um, so there are examples like applied machine learning, which is a very great class. Um, it's sometimes people would say it's a little like easier than the core like machine learning, but I think it's, it's practical in the sense that you learn how it, it is applied in the in the like actual industrial world, but you are also learning how it works. Like you don't necessarily need that much um, like mathematical uh, understanding for in order for you to learn to use it, because sometimes it's more important to, for you to learn to know how the pipeline actually works in the in a work life instead of learning the detailed like mathematical formulas behind those. Um, I think applied machine learning like. Um, the professor is, has a very clear um, lecturing style, and he obviously knows what he's doing. Um, that's the class I'm taking this semester. I'm just like mm -hmm. taking it a little easier. Um, and then applied to the class for this, um, there's also a data science specific elective. I got very uh, positive reviews from my classmates who are taking it. And um, the, the, the adjunct professor is also from Google. I think he has a lot of industrial like experience. So those two classes, um, I think is very good um, introduction. Uh, if you are coming into the program, um, just go for the class, you have the seats because you're a data science student. Yeah, I wanted to add something to that. Johan mentioned applied machine learning. That course, I honestly recommend it to every student who asks me. That's because you, as he said, you he covers the breadth of different machine learning techniques. But one of the nicest things about this professor is that if you want to learn something, you can go to him and be like, I want to focus on deployment of models. He will make sure that he adds a lecture specifically on that if he gets a lot of requests. He, like makes sure that he's taking the student's requests into account, which is amazing, I feel. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. That's awesome, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm trying to write these. So, uh, okay, many of you have already, you're in your uh, third semester, so you have the summer term, um, you're coming up on graduation this fall. So, you've already been through the process of looking for opportunities for internship or research if you use that in the summer. Can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, how it was to find an internship? I think even applicants, you know, I know once their students are coming in in the fall, this is one of the first questions that, you know, Taylor and I get are about like, how do I find an internship? There's a lot of anxiety around that. Um, so I'm assuming many of the applicants are also, uh, you know, wondering a little bit about what that process looks like, you know, do they need to start looking at, at jobs before they even come to Columbia? Um, so if you want to talk a little bit about what your experience was um, looking for that, um, any advice you have um, about you know, how we support our students, things of that nature, I think that would be helpful. I can go first. I actually have a funny story related to this. So I remember uh, getting very anxious about when do I need to start? So one of the first things that I did was I went to John and he, the first thing he asked me was, are you on LinkedIn and what does your network look like? And I had just uh, finished my tenure as a research associate at Harvard University. And I didn't really use LinkedIn. So I said, it's just my colleagues at Harvard. And he goes, that's a really bad network. <laughs> you, need, <laughs> you really need to start networking. And honestly, like I, I thought that maybe he's just like making, he's just, you know, saying something that he tells everybody. There's no really thought behind it. Maybe he just likes LinkedIn. And I couldn't be more wrong. Uh, networking is the key. Use John as much as you can. He has a lot of people he knows. He knows what should you should be saying to people because I feel you can keep applying through career websites. What really gets your foot in the door is by talking to people. So you need to start early, start around, uh, leave a month, I would say, to settle down in New York. It's a huge place. It's, a, it's going to be a big change. So give yourself some time to settle down before you take on this humongous task of applying. For internships, you will get a lot of rejects. Um, don't get disheartened. But again, networking is the key. So I, I think I started applying to internships uh, in Jan uh, or December really. 
because I was just too anxious to get anything done. Um, and most of the interviews I got was through networking, just telling myself to people, hey, I really like this company. I really like this role. Do you have anything for me? And a lot of people would respond, but then they'll only respond if you have a good network. If you just have four people in your network, they'll probably think that this is a fake account mm -hmm. or something. So again, I think the career support system in the DSI is amazing. You can just stop by uh, whenever you want. They'll help you out. They'll give you a lot of contacts that you can reach out to, Columbia alumni that you can reach out to, people who are working in a similar field. And another thing that I want to highlight here is that if you have a specific field, because I always wanted to go into healthcare, so I was exclusively looking at pharmaceutical companies, there are groups within the DSI that I think there's one health center group, there's one for climate change, there's one for finance, fintech. So you can, you have a lot of people who are in the same boat and uh, you have a support system. So I think if you keep at it, it's going to happen. That's great. I'm glad John was able to kind of change your mind about LinkedIn. LinkedIn. You know, <laughs> yeah. Networking, networking, networking. I think that's what everyone uh, emails everyone. And um, if anyone else wants to share their experience about, you know, an internship or, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Um, so I think, uh, I mean, internship search takes a lot of time. So I think um, just starting when you have more time concerning other, considering other uh, commitments um, is always best. Um, I, I had my, I only got my internship sometime in, April, March, so pretty close to when it actually started in June. And I was very happy with that, but obviously for peace of mind, um, some might prefer to have it earlier and companies definitely, or like especially larger companies start hiring earlier. I would say, for example, startups, they often only hire two months, one month in advance because they just otherwise just don't know who they can hire or what they need. Um, but I also, for example, know of a friend who through, again, network connections, got an internship um, before he arrived. And so that meant he had no stress during the semester. <laughs> it didn't have to look up anything. So obviously, I would I would say that's, that's interesting. The, that's, out. Yeah. <laughs> that's the ideal <laughs> right. situation. But then also, I would say without luck and like knowing somebody that just has a job opening, that's almost impossible because you don't have you likely don't have any connections in New York if you want to do your internship in New York, maybe even the US. Um, and so obviously like branching out and talking to people you already know right now is very helpful. And like just saying, hey, I'm looking for an internship 2024 um, or, or later. I, um, it is always a smart thing, I think. Just like everybody should know that you're looking for something. Um, and then I also agree that I found my internship basically through network again. I started attending after realizing that just sending out loads of applications um, doesn't work or like the, the time you spend is um, way too long to compared to the output you get. I texted people, texted alumni, um, went to all possible career events by either the Data Science Institute or um, the engineering faculty or uh, some alumni association and then would actually follow up with people and. Um, also try to be open to just like chat and get to know them and not always like, oh, I only need to know this person for this specific job, but just be uh, interested and, um, and, 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 and open to talk about certain things. And um, through that, I then found my internship and um, I can only recommend just knowing as many people as possible and staying in touch with them. Fantastic. All right, oh, go ahead. Oh, um, I just had like a brief comment. I had like yeah. a different um, situation, but definitely agree with the whole um, like emphasis on networking and reaching out. Um, Shruti also mentioned uh, reaching out to current students. That could be very helpful. Um, before I entered the program, um, this kind of times into funding as well, because there are fellowships that are available like the GEM Fellowship, the JP Morgan Fellowship that you can apply to where um, you are assisted with funding during your tenure here at Columbia University, and then you also have 
um, internships lined up with either J.P. Morgan or other um, industries under other companies with the GEM Fellowship. So my situation was the summer before I got into Columbia, I worked at um, the Applied Physics Lab with John Hopkins in Maryland, and they offered another summer for the following year. So there are opportunities like that that are available that you can apply to. Yeah, thank you. And um, you mentioned the J.P. Morgan Fellowship, and we have, um, we didn't officially announce it for the 2023 yet, um, but anyone on here um, that's interested in learning a little bit more about that it is for U.S. citizens and permanent residents only. Um, we'll post some information about that. Um, and then the GEM Fellowship is also something that Columbia University does participate in. So definitely, thank you for reminding us of that. Um, so I've got a couple questions um, from students that we want to, you know, for, for our, our panel. Um, a lot of students are interested in learning a little bit more about research assistants and PA. Um, so briefly in the presentation, I talk about how um, TAing um, is often kind of competitive to get those opportunities. Um, and uh, but we and that research assistantships are available. Uh, I don't know if anyone here has completed any of those. And if you have, you talk about kind of how you are made aware of those opportunities. Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> so I've done a TA in my first semester coming to uh, Columbia. Um, I think, so, so, so the way that I know about the position is through the data science newsletter. Um, I think one very like, um, like important aspect of the data science program is that we have like weekly newsletters covering like internship opportunities, like full-time, um, as well as research and uh, positions, on-campus positions at Columbia. And I, um, I was like, I saw the opportunity for the TA and then I applied, then I, I heard back and then I had an interview. So that's how I got it. And for research, uh, I haven't done much research, but um, from a lot of my friends had. Uh, so they, what they did is, for example, if you have relevant experience in undergrad, um, you can just directly email um, the, the, the research like professors that you want to work with and then to see if they have any openings in their labs. Um, another thing is if you um, know a professor that you want to work with, one good practice is when you arrive in campus, um, you can go to their office and to ask them in person. Because sometimes even though uh, if they don't have any opening for their lab, let's say for that semester, um, some professors are open for you to attend their weekly meetings so that you can just like, be there and then hear about, listen and learn about what they're doing. And uh, most often if you do that um, in the first semester, they would uh, take you the next semester um, if they have an opening because you already know and are familiar with the work they do. Um, so that's some advice I would give for the research. Thank you. Thank you. I think to add to Yuan's point, there's also, um... I'm forgetting the name of it. Uh, I do remember Brianne and I think John sending out an Excel file with all the research projects. Uh, I'm not sure if it was called Data for Good. Um, yeah, it, it, there's a Campus Connection program and, and the Data for Good, there's usually a list of, of opportunities, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, we got an Excel file with a list of research projects, the lab and uh, how to apply. You can do that. I did get an, uh, a research opportunity through that, but unfortunately I wasn't able to continue because um, other things. Um, for the TAs, uh, you can use Campus Connections in the newsletter as well, but if you feel like you missed out an opportunity, you can always reach out to professors. I was actually scared of, uh, scared of doing that. And I remember reaching out to Brianne and Brianne was like, don't worry about it, just email, just tell the professor you want to work with them. People here are very, um, very sweet. They will talk to you, they will not shush you away. So if you have the experience, always attach your resume, just have a small 10 line or even like three lines uh, cover letter just to express your interest, why you think you'll be a good fit and you will get opportunities. So I've done a TA in every semester basically. Fantastic. 
Um, another question that came in from someone was, um, can the students provide some insight on your motivation or goals to pursue the MS in data science? And what surprised you in a good way about coming, coming to uh, data science at Columbia? So why data science? Um, I think I chose data science because because I was working in a healthcare setting, I realized that a lot of people were not really leveraging the data sets. Um, and even when I tried to do that, it was hard to sell it to them because these were all biologists. They didn't really understand the math behind it. They didn't really understand what prediction really meant. So for me, it was important to get my basics right. And I felt like Googling would not get me there fast enough. Mm -hmm. So I needed to have and education in that to be able to leverage that, which is why I chose data science. Um, something that pleasantly surprised me about Columbia. So before coming to New York, I was based in Boston. So before coming to New York, I had a lot of my colleagues tell me, New York people are very, very rude. They're like this, they're like that. You have to be careful. And I was like, oh my God, I will never be able to survive there. But when I came to Columbia, everybody is so nice. They were help you through every single process and it's not just about which classes do I take you can go to Brian or Taylor and John and be like this class is really really heavy I'm not sure if I'm going to pass it how do I what do I do they will help you out through everything and the alumni network is also very helpful so if you have uh, interviews lined up you can go to John and he will put you in touch with people who can take your mock interviews uh, which is very, very helpful. Uh, it's different than practicing in front of a mirror. So uh, I would say just how helpful the entire community is and how supportive they are. I, I mean, I don't need to talk about how amazing the program is because it's Columbia. It's mm -hmm. all about people, at least. Fantastic. Anyone else wanna? I'm gonna go ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, I would I would agree that I was um I was very pleasantly surprised by um the basically the data science lounge. So for those obviously if we don't know, um the data science institute has a lounge on campus, and um where only data science students go, and that's very unique. So most other stu uh, study programs don't have that, and the lounge itself is nice and all, but the big advantage is like every other like so many other data science students are there. And even if you don't know anybody or you don't know who takes the same class, you'll likely find somebody who you, uh, who you can work with and everybody's happy to share because in the beginning, everybody's like, or like everybody has a lot to do. So everybody really likes to get and give help. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so that was awesome to like, that is awesome to go there and talk about homework and understand things. And people are so happy to teach and, and then tell you how, like help you and again there it helps that people come from different backgrounds so for example I don't know my background I would say is mathematically statistically weaker than uh, of some others and the, and then these people help me and the, for example I help in more like computational coding questions um, of this and um, I think especially listening to the stories of friends from other study programs um, the data science community is more tightly is tight more tightly knit than other study programs that's great to hear and we're glad that you're able to use the lounge again <laughs> there was a time when it wasn't open for everyone so we're yeah. we're happy to be back to being able to do that and everybody wants in so you guys can flex being in dsi <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true yeah, I was gonna. I was. I was also gonna say uh, data science lounge, <clears throat> as Yannick was mentioning. Um, and then I think one other uh, important aspect for that data science lounge is um, almost all the faculty that is that are related to data science are inside the lounge. Um, so it's, you have a very easy access. Um, so I'll just like sometimes I'll just walk to John's office, um, and it, it's just so easy. And if he has a meeting, then I'll say, okay, I'll come back later. Like, mm -hmm. it's, you know where they are. And then uh, when you are waiting for them, you can just uh, find a desk in the data science lounge, do some of your work, and then go find 
the person you want to see later. And there are also some professors' um, offices in the data science lounge. Um, I was a little, uh, I was a little afraid to to like to visit them because th those are like professors, not really like I don't know how much like affiliations they they want to have with like students just studying there. But I feel like um, if you are interested in uh, like connecting with the professor and you realize that okay that professor's office is in the data science lounge, it might be an opportunity for you. Um, depends on what you're looking for. Fantastic. Um, I just wanted to briefly like also um, emphasize the reason why I think I um, specifically chose Columbia because how integrated the uh, data science institute is throughout different departments throughout the school, not just in engineering, but also in the school of architecture per se, um, in nursing, in the law school. So I think it's also really interesting that BSI also hosts these lecture series that you can attend and see how say like nurses and how lawyers and how um, like people from a variety of different disciplines are um, using data science and are um, employing data scientists to really get involved with their work. So I really loved how integrated the DSI is just with throughout Columbia um, and it kind of broadened your perspective as to like what you can do, whether it's in research or in industry. Awesome, and I'm glad I know uh, the, the DSI staff um, puts on a lot of different events for everyone. So it's wonderful to hear people are taking advantage of it. It's, um, there's a lot of great resources. And again, that comes back to like full circle of networking, right? Because the more you attend those events, the more you're seeing kind of new people and connecting with them at these um, in-person events again. Um, so I guess I, I know we're we're over time um, that I, I a lot of program. I know you're all busy. <clears throat> so I guess the last question I'll have for you is if anyone wants to share kind of any advice that you'd like to give to applicants since you were recently um, in this uh, position of trying to figure out where to apply and, and um, if Columbia was the right fit. So any brief um, you know advice that you have if you have any uh and then we'll we'll let you be going off to your busy busy time <laughs> uh i think um okay i'll go first then um uh, for for looking um on into like programs i think first of all um you could you should explore what programs there are in a school and what um, area you want to focus in because a lot of uh, engineering programs or even like art, arts and science schools they have programs that are in different names but they have similar concentration in terms of what they want uh, what they're looking for what they want their students to achieve afterwards um, so looking at a program that you you think would be aligned to where you want to go in the future and kind of um, uh, like your ex past experience can have some foundations for the program. I think that will be the best uh, kind of programs that um, you can look for. And once you have narrowed down the programs into a list of the ones that you think would be uh, beneficial for you in the future, I think one, uh, the thing you, uh, most important thing is what you guys are doing right now, just to go on panels, um, go to like info sessions to learn about the program from um, the admission office or like officer and also the students who, who are working, uh, who are like studying there. I think another um, aspect is looking like reach out in LinkedIn. I have a lot of people reached out um, to me in LinkedIn. I'm, I'm sure that um, like all the panelists here also have people reaching out to them. Uh, so uh, ask about their experience and have specific questions for them because it will be very hard for them to answer your questions if you are just, how's your experience? How's the, uh, like, uh, questions like that? Look, uh, ask things that you think is important to you. Some people might uh, might want more focus on the job opportunity. Some will um, want to be a researcher in the future. Like some people are more interested in the academics and course curriculums, how flexible it is. Um, what's the course structure? How are the professors? Um, what was the level of difficulty for the courseworks, et cetera? So understanding the aspects that, are, that you think is the most important, I think is very uh, crucial because you know that for the next one year and a half or two years, 
you are going to commit your time into the, this program that you choose. Um, and afterwards, I think um, is just talk to um, like have I'll have chats, have calls. Uh, people can come here. I think the most like the the indicate indicating factor that I choose um, Columbia is I had calls with Brienne and Violet at the time. Um, so throughout uh, through an individual call, it's very um, it's very easy to uh, communicate and to learn much more about what you see on the website, on the paper, uh, and I think Columbia was probably like the, the only school that when I applied that offered this. Um, so I was, it instantly gave me a really good impression um, to the support system, to the staff, as well as the program. Um, so that's some of the advice that I would give uh, in choosing the programs. Fantastic. I can go next. So uh, to add to Yunhan's point, uh, just networking with the alumni or current MSDA students is very important for you to get a sense of what exactly you're signing up for. One of the things that I did in my experience was think about why I wanted to, data, to do data science in the first place. And once I knew where the knowledge gap was, I went through the core courses of each of the universities that I was looking into because I wanted to be able to fill that knowledge gap without having to take electives because electives are reserved for all the things that I want to explore and not the things that I really, really need to learn. So one of the things that I did was look at the core courses, see which ones ticked my boxes of what I need to learn. And once I had that, I then moved on to looking at different uh, departments in the university, seeing what kinds of uh, electives they had um, that really, really helped me. Another thing that I did was to look at, are there any groups within the field that I want to be in uh, that is supported by data science? Are there professors who are in this field affiliated with data science conducting research? So if I wanted to go into research, I could reach out to those professors. It's very important to have a sense of uh, what field you want to go in and it's fine if you don't yet. It's fine if you're uh, still figuring out, which is why you have electives to explore. So it's it's always exploration versus exploitation, what you want to do. Um, as long as you're able to do that, I think that's going to serve the purpose of your master's degree. And yeah, as Nihan said, everybody's really sweet. It, talking to Brianna is like having a warm hug. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I would just say that network, uh, think about why you want to do data science, what skills you're looking to learn, and if the university is going to get you those skills without you having to sign up for different electives. That, that would be my biggest advice. Fantastic. I really agree with what um, Shruti mentioned about looking at where your knowledge gap is and identifying what school matches that. And I would also add on to that, I feel like what was a key differentiating factor between Columbia and other schools or other uh, data science programs, but that like the classes are taught by specific departments, like you will have specific, our specific courses are specifically coming from um, the math department, the computer science department, I noticed because some schools are having a harder time of defining what a data science curriculum looks like, um, you'll have like general like data science departments and every course is under data science department and there's not really a deep dive when you look into curriculum. So perhaps while looking at uh, the knowledge gap, look at what the curriculum looks like, who's teaching it, um, that also could help. Um, but yeah, also emphasis on networking and being open and uh, reaching out to people. Fantastic. To not repeat what everybody already said, I was also, when I chose my program, my university, um, one big consideration for me was also like, where will I have the most memorable experience? And I think Columbia with its campus right in New York, um, is just was a no brainer in that, in that selection that I was thinking, okay, where will I probably have the most freedom, the most possibilities to do whatever I want at at a given time and um, I figured that living in New York being living close to campus having that uh, beautiful campus right next door 
um, but also the, the the freedom of a city and other fantastic cities nearby would just be the most um, amazing experience I could have. And um, I think that's something because it's also right. You live. You don't only go to school, right? You also live during that time, and uh, so that's very important to consider for me, and I think also for you. And um, and, and I think in that in that sense, there's no other location competing, no other school competing really with Columbia. Awesome. Well, I hope you are taking advantage of the beautiful fall that we're having here, and um, I I really really appreciate everyone for for taking the time out today. I know again you guys are so busy, um, but I I think everyone that's on this call today uh, greatly appreciate your your time and um, your your thoughtful um, advice and experience. So. Uh, I'll see you guys soon. Um, thank you all again. And for everyone on the line, we're still going to answer a lot of the questions that you have for Taylor and myself, so you can hang on. But um, thank you all uh, for joining us. Thank you. Hopefully, see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye Brian. Awesome. Um, so I'm so glad that uh, for everyone that's still with us today that we were able to, um, we're, we're still, uh, if I see someone says thank you for the session, okay, maybe they were talking to the students, but, um, and I know we saw a drop off of people, but if you're still able to join, we're going to, we're going to try to answer um, the additional questions that came in through the question portal for Taylor and myself. Um, and if you can't, this session is being recorded, like I said. So uh, if you miss this and you have to go do something else, we'll, we'll make sure that you get a copy of this. So um, Taylor and I are going to launch into answering some of these questions now. Um, okay. okay. Um, so one um, question I see is about the class sizes. Um, are they large or small? Um, so there definitely is a mixture of class sizes that are offered through um, this program and at, at Columbia and, and engineering. Um, for the core classes in particular, the, the classes are typically the size of the cohort. So this year we have a class size of about 200 students. Um, so many of our classes are um, 200 students in size. Um, that being said, we have a few electives that are more specialized, things like the financial um, structuring class, uh, and those are, you know, less than 50 students. Um, so it can be a mix, um, but it is helpful to understand that the large, the core classes and some of the really, um, you know, high interest classes that are electives like uh, applied machine learning are um, definitely going to be a larger in size. So that everyone can can get those. Um, uh, there are a few questions about interview. Um, so the uh, to quickly, I don't know. I know uh, Taylor answered a bunch of these already. Um, so just to, to to talk a little bit about the interview um, after someone submits an application. Um, in the system, the system will um, request that someone submit an online interview. Um, you don't really need to prepare for it. Um, there is uh, basically, it's just an opportunity for the um, review committee to get to know someone. Um, so it's uh, typical questions that are, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, uh, tell us about, you know, your undergraduate experience or experience in math, things like that. Um, but, you know, nothing, no technical questions that you need to prepare for, like uh, a job interview. Um, so um, one question is, um, it, are the applications reviewed after February 15th? What are the advantages of people applying before January 15th? Um, so the January 15th deadline is actually when the review process starts. Uh, we give basically a month extra for people to start to, to submit an application, to complete um, an application. 
um, but students that submit on January 14th, that's when we want people to actually submit by because the application will be process will be um, starting at that point, the review process. Um, so if you submit by February 15th, though, that's fine. And we will con you know, confirm that your application will be reviewed. Anything after that, we cannot guarantee you'll be reviewed. Um, the advantage of submitting by January 15th is that you're in the first um, bulk of review. Um, and we, we do encourage you to submit by then. Um, how do publications matter in the application? Um, it is not a hard uh, prerequisite. Um, so if that's something to show that you have experience in um, programming or you know um, working in a lab or you know things of that nature, that's great. All, all of the experience that you have is helpful for the reviewers to understand how uh, prepared you are for this program, um, but it's not a hard prerequisite. And even, um, you know, yeah, so it, it's not a hard, it's not a hard to look at it, but the more experience that you can show us, again, whether it's you, this person has, says they have research experience, that's great. Um, so make sure you're listing that on your resume and talking about different tools and, um, you know, software that you've used and, um, in, in, in projects that you've presented and completed um, in, in your essay, in your uh, resume, um, getting some of those faculty that you work with through that research experience um, to write your letters of recommendation. You know, those are the things that I would, I would say focus on. Uh, so to talk a little bit about the curriculum, um, the question uh, talks about how, uh, when do I need to decide whether to pack it in one year? Um, we don't recommend that someone complete in one year. Um, part of the reason is that you are missing out on an opportunity to complete an internship. Um, if someone has to do this, we have the ability to do that. Um, we have some students that have um, an external funding opportunity and scholarship that requires them to complete it in a year. And so we would then work with you um, to, to map that out. Um, you might use the summer term to complete an elective. You would need to then have the capstone in the spring, um, which isn't ideal because um, you are then taking it with your core classes, um, but it is something that we can do and we typically work with individuals to kind of map that out. Um, early on in, in the term, so we would talk to you prior in the summer, um, uh, we have a webinar to talk about registration for the fall. And you know, during those times, we'd actually you know, encourage you to have those, those conversations with us. Um, how is, how is um, and would you have info on what electives are available, available for the summer term? We don't offer data science electives or courses in the summer, but you can look for electives that are offered through the um, peer department. Um, and those are typically offered uh, and, and scheduled in the February for the, the summer. Um, <clears throat> okay, so. Um, do graduates from the master's program go to work in industries or is there people pursuing PhDs? Um, if so, what are some academic fields they go into for the PhD? Um, so we do have, you know, the vast majority of our, our graduates are going into industry, um, but we do have some uh, um, students that are interested in going out into a PhD. Um, if you are interested in that, we do encourage you. Sorry. Um, if you are interested in that, we do encourage you to consider um, having a conversation with our team early on so that we can guide you into what classes you should be taking or how you should um, schedule out your program to have a, a strong application for a PhD. Um, bear with me one moment. I'll be
sorry about that. Um, and uh, in regards to the fields that they go into, we've had students go um, on to um, a variety of, of different PhDs, and we've had students come into Columbia's PhD for computer science um, as well. Um, and there's students that go into other areas um, outside of Columbia. Um, who can we reach out to be sure if we fulfilled course prerequisites? Um, so I think you're asking um, about when, I don't know, if, if you're asking about as if you're an applicant, you know, we, we list out some of the courses here that we would encourage you to complete. If you're talking about when you are a current student to talk about how, um, to make sure that you completed courses that's a prerequisite takes um, like an elective or something. Um, typically, the it's up to the student to make sure that you've completed that um, the, the prerequisite listed. So there's usually a course syllabus available, and the first two weeks of the, of the semester are open for students to try a class out. So you know you're able to go to a class lecture, you know, perhaps you need some clarification from the instructor at that point to see if this is a, the right fit for you, um, then you can make changes in those first two, two um, uh, weeks of the semester. Um, question, what are red, uh, what are the red and green flags on an application? Um, I'd say, you know, we talked a little bit about the program prerequisites, um, and I think that it's really important um, to make sure that you are, throughout the application, answering the question, how am I prepared for this program? How is this person prepared for this program? That's what the review committee is going to be looking um, for. Um, so there is a part of the application um, that is a uh, data science course section. If, you, if someone doesn't fill that out, it makes it hard for um, the reviewers to go through someone's transcripts because we are looking for, again, specific courses that are completed. Um, and it's fair to assume if you don't fill that out, then you aren't, you haven't completed those classes. Um, you know, so it, I would say making sure you're diligent um, in completing that. You know, a red flag would be if they didn't complete that, then they probably didn't take the course, or they weren't really that interested in going into this program. Right? Um, making sure you're you're thoroughly answering these questions, um, and uh, a red flag would also, which we've seen in the past, would be you know someone having a reference letter um, that talks about like a different school or a different application program, or like the the personal statement, um, I should say, has a, a different um, program. So someone that's applying to multiple programs and um, or even a different program at Columbia, um, you know, it's it's you know be be thoughtful and careful about when you complete this program. We don't know that people are applying to multiple programs, but um, if you don't seem to to be aware of what you're submitting, you know, it doesn't look great. Um, and again, uh, just continually answer the question, how am I prepared for this program? Um, showing us what experience you have through your resume, through um, your personal statement, through the, um, the data science question area with all, you know, making sure you're showing us the, the classes you've taken, things of that nature. I hope that helps. Um, if in similar um, areas, so if we've done calculus as a part of some of the courses, um, like micro and macroeconomics, we're not explicitly a math course, how can we highlight that? Or does it need to be the exact math course to be considered? Um, you can highlight that on your resume. You can talk about that in when it comes to the, the course um, section. Um, we actually specifically ask, um, you know, we know that, for instance, calculus is not necessarily always called calculus, but it could be math, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Like, um, so when we ask about the certain courses, we do also ask um, what's the name of the course on your transcript so we can match it up. Um, and that's 
that hopefully is helpful. And um, currently a full-time analyst. I'm wondering if there are more students that worked in the data science industry prior to joining this program or coming from school switching from another field. Um, so we do have most of our students are coming um, from undergraduate institutions recently within the past couple of years, but we always have um, students that are, are part of the program that have 5, 10, 15, 20 years work experience um, that are currently in the um, or have been exposed to data science and are doing it, but they want to come back for some more formalized education on it. Um, so we do have a variety of, of, um, of students here um, coming in from different industries. Um, going off of this, students who worked in industries, they finally had significant changes career-wise, promotion, switching industries after completing the program, for sure. Um, people, I've, you know, we've had um, individuals who have, again, maybe been exposed to data science through um, their work, maybe they're working with data scientists as a part of different projects um, and they want to be doing what their their colleagues are doing right um and so we definitely have um the opportunity for students to graduates to, to make some major changes with their careers and that's why we have um, our career team as well to help guide you um okay looks like the last question we have here is what should be kept in mind um what Things should I highlight for applying to the program? Um, I come from a data science engineering background and um, undergrad uh, in electronics um, and enough working with personal projects in data science. Um, so really what I was just speaking to before, which is, um, you know, making sure you're always highlighting that, um, making sure that you're, you know, looking at your you know, personal statement. Are are you talking about that experience that you highlighted? You know, are you talking about specific projects that you've completed? Um, just because a, a course is completed um, that, you know, is a different name, maybe, you know, it's an opportunity to talk about, well, I actually completed a data science related project in that course. We wouldn't know from the name, making sure you're using your personal statement for things like that, using your resume for things like that, listing out software and tools. Um, you you know thinking thoughtfully about the individuals that you're asking to be a reference um you know are they people that can attest to your programming skills that can attest to your quantitative background your research experience um things of that nature do they know you well or are you one of you know 500 in the class that um you know that you took four years ago um so i would say thinking about some of those things um, yeah. um, so uh, the last question before we wrap up um, is, is an economics major considered to fulfill the quantitative course prerequisites? Generally, what backgrounds do many students have? Um, so most of our students do come from a, like a CS or math or stats background, but, um, you know, we have a large group of um, applicants and admitted students from an economics background. Um, so it's a matter of making sure you're highlighting that you have completed um, linear algebra, that you have enough programming experience. Um, no major is going to be excluded, no undergraduate major is going to be excluded from being considered for the program. It's a matter of, again, making sure that you're highlighting that you have the completed the prerequisites. Um, you know, we definitely have have, have economics majors that um, have completed both um, the programming and the quant um, experience through their, their undergraduate experience, so. All right. Well, it looks like that is all that we have today. Um, I wanted to share my screen one last time real quick to just share um, our information to stay connected. Um, thank you so much, Taylor, for getting through <laughs> a lot of questions while we had um, the panel and our team um, and uh, answering questions. So if um, you think of any additional questions um, after today's presentation, 
um, please feel free to reach out to our team. You can email us at data science admissions at columbia.edu. Um, any support about the actual application uh, itself, um, you have these um, GRA, uh, well, GR admit, um, grad admit is what we call it, um, at columbia.edu. Um, or support at groundengineering.columbia.edu. Um, so any technical issues, you can't log in, things of that nature, or it's not submitting, um, definitely that team will be able to help you with that. Um, connect with um, Columbia Engineering, connect with um, data science on the social media. Um, there's Instagram, there's LinkedIn, there's uh, Facebook pages, we can connect with students. Um, and we're here for you. Um, you know, I hope that this is an informative um, presentation today. Um, we're, gonna, we're really fortunate to have some of our students um, join us and answer your questions and, and provide just some, some information about their experience. Um, and we will be sending a follow-up email to all attendees and those who weren't able to actually attend that they had signed up or left early um, with a recording of today's session so that you know, you can go back because you know we talked about that. You know, one class that you wanted to take and couldn't remember the name of it. Um, so you'll have this for reference. Um, again, thank you, Taylor, for all of uh, answering the questions, and we thank you all for joining us today. <laughs>